Amen. Hey, it's great to have all of you here today. Thank you for taking the time to join us in celebrating the, the, the incredible victory of the resurrection. So let us join our hearts together. Again, Lord, we, uh, we pause in the beginning of this day because of what you have done for us, Lord. We have hope. We have life. Lord, we have peace, we have joy, we have security about our future, all because of you and only because of you. So thank you for what you have done for us. We come, Lord, to praise you today, to, to open up the scriptures, to learn once again who we are, Lord, and what difference this makes in our lives. So send your Holy Spirit upon us to teach us and lead us and guide us in every way. In Jesus' name, amen. It's Friday. Jesus is praying. Peter is asleep. Judas is betraying. But Sunday's coming. It's Friday. Pilate's struggling. The council is conspiring. The crowd is vilified. They don't even know that Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are running light. Sheep without a shepherd. Mary's crying. Peter is denying. But they don't know that Sundays are coming. It's Friday. The Romans beat my Jesus. They robe him in scar. They crown him with thorns. But they don't know that Sundays come. It's Friday. See Jesus walking to Calvary, his blood dripping, his body stumbling, and his spirit's burden. But you see, it's only Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The world's winning. People are sinning. And evil's grinning. It's Friday. The soldiers nailed my Savior's hands to the cross. They nailed my Savior's feet to the cross. And then they raised him up next to criminals. It's right. But let me tell you something. Sunday's coming. It's right. The disciples are questioning what has happened to their king. And the Pharisees are celebrating that their scheming has been achieved. But they don't know. It's only Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. He's hanging on the cross, feeling forsaken by his father, left alone and dying. Can nobody save him? Oh, it's Friday, but Sunday's come. It's Friday, the earth trembles, the sky grows dark, my king yields his spirit. It's Friday, hope is lost, death has won, sin has conquered, and Satan's just a laugh. It's Friday. Jesus is buried. A soldier stands guard. And a rock is rolled into place. But it's Friday. It is only Friday. Sunday is a coming. I, I had the privilege of, of hearing Dr., the late Dr. E.V. Hill, uh, just a renowned African-American preacher, actually deliver this 30-minute sermon. This is the short, short version of it. And I thought this would be a great way to begin today because the best way to understand and, and comprehend and appreciate the joy of what we celebrate today is see it through the lens 
of the darkness and despair and death of Good Friday. And I wanted to show you this clip because it all revolves around one word. One word that makes all of the difference between Friday and Sunday, between sorrow and joy, between death and life. And that one word in this clip is a word that Luke uses four times as he tells the gospel story to the world. And I just wanted to read this, uh, his account this morning as we begin. From Luke 24. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb that they refers to the women who followed Jesus, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. And the women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. So what's the word we're going to focus on today? The word but. It's Friday, but Sunday's coming. He is not here, but has risen. We're going to look at God's big but today in the Easter account. And to do that, uh, we're going to talk about a few things. They're on the sheet that you've got in front of you. You can pull that out. It's got the scriptures. It's got the, what we just read from Luke. It's got the message notes. It's got a place to, to write some things down if you want to take notes. And here are the two buts, big buts, that we're going to focus on that come out of the Easter story. Here's the first. Your sin is serious, but not fatal. So, I just want to say, nobody likes talking about sin, right? Come on, this is supposed to be a joyous day. It's supposed to be a happy day. Nobody likes to hear talk about sin. Unless it's somebody else's. Unless it's somebody else's. <laughs> but we're going to talk about our sin today. And the uncomfortable reality is that we all have a problem with sin. We all have this human tendency to want to do our thing our own way, to follow our own desires, our own ways, or our own will, instead of God's desires, God's way, and God's will. And the word you can use to summarize that is called sin. This is uh, how Paul talks about it in Romans 3. For everyone has sinned, and we all fall short of God's glorious standard. Hey, we're all in the same boat with this. We all do this to one degree or another. And if you're really honest with yourself, you know how your own desires to do your thing and follow your will and your ways instead of God's will and God's ways has gotten you into trouble and pain and suffering, how it's kind of put you in a perpetual Friday of darkness, right? When you think about some of the things that you've done wrong, I mean, it just it puts this dark shadow over your life and you're filled with regrets. I mean, we've all got stories of things that we regret doing, don't we? Can't we be honest about that? So what you're going to do is you're going to turn to somebody next to you that you don't know and you're going to tell them your biggest sin right now, okay? <laughs> I know you could and we could fill this whole morning up with stories because we've all got stories of regrets because we have this tendency to sin. And it's like, you know, if this was the end of the story, if this was it, period, and that's all we know from God, there'd be this dark cloud of Friday hanging over us and there would be no hope. But this is not the end of the story. God has loved us with an incredible, gracious, and unconditional love so much that he wanted to come into, into our world, into this life, to do something about this problem of sin. And so Jesus came as God in the flesh with a mission, ultimately, to go to the cross, to die for us on the cross, to take the penalty of our sin upon himself 
and forgive that sin for you and for everyone else, for anyone who would believe and trust in him as Lord and Savior, so that we be, could be completely forgiven and free from what shackles us. Paul uh, goes on to put it this way. You are now ashamed of the sinful things that you used to do, things that ended in eternal doom. That's, that's the bad news. And the good news is, even though there are these sinful things, but now you are free from the power of sin. And he goes on to talk about Jesus' death on the cross. Our sin is serious, absolutely a serious problem, but it is not fatal because Jesus rose from the dead. His resurrection on Easter morning proves that everything he said about who he was and what he did is true. It proves that when he died on the cross, he was the eternal God in human form who had the power to forgive all of our sins so that we could be free. Because of Jesus Christ and his resurrection, we know that we have full forgiveness and full freedom from our sins. That gift given to anybody who believes in him as Lord and Savior. Your sin is serious but not fatal because of Jesus' resurrection. The second point is this. Your death is certain, but not final. So I looked up in the last census some statistics about our US population. See how close you can get to some of these. Percent of the population that is female. Anybody want to take a guess? 51%. Actually, it's, it's 50.5. And, and, and so guys, we all know we're outnumbered, right? I mean, it's, we all knew, we didn't, we knew that before the, that statistic, you know? Uh, percent of our population, that's a uh, minority. 19, a little bit higher than that. It's actually 24%. Percent of the po our population, that's 65 and over. According to the statistic that I read, it's 17% and growing as us baby boomers get to be over 65. And here's one I think if, if you were way off on any of those, you will be spot on on this one, okay? I guarantee it. Percent of the population that will one day die. 100%, right? All of us, that's true. I mean, that, that's a no-brainer. God knows this sobering statistic about us, and he also knows that a vast number of people who are aware that there's death out there somewhere are worried about that and are fearful and there's this like this black friday cloud that hangs over their life because they're so uncertain about death and is there anything beyond that and what is that the good news that we celebrate today is that jesus christ came into this world not only to bring forgiveness and freedom through his death on the cross but bring us victory over death through his own resurrection to let us experience the joy of knowing where our eternal destiny is. Listen to how Paul puts this. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I mean, this is, this is an amazing truth that we share today that anyone, anyone who says yes to Jesus Christ who admits their sin and turns to him, has the promise of life forever in God's kingdom. And that makes all of the difference in life. It makes an, e an internal difference right now because we know that the risen Jesus is with us. And now we can live, anyone who believes in him can live at peace every day with security and confidence that, that we know that the Lord is with us and we know what will happen into the future. And we have have any eternal hope because we know that Jesus is victorious over death and that that moment that we die, we will be with God forever in his heavenly home. We have that promise sealed for us through what Jesus Christ has done on the cross and in the empty tomb. And that is why we celebrate today. So let me just tell a quick story about how all of this, the difference this makes. Um, so 10 years ago, Last January, I was at home 
I was, uh, Friday morning, I can remember everything about this day. Friday morning, I was working on finishing up the message, and I was at my desk, and all of a sudden, I, I felt this weird little pain up in my shoulder. Like, and I felt that before, but when I'm swimming, I kind of pull one of those tendons, or if I'm doing weights, I kind of felt that, but I was just sitting in a chair. I'm thinking, oh man, I'm getting old. So after a few minutes then, uh, I start sweating profusely. And then I get nauseous on my stomach. And I stop and think, wait a second, that's three out of the four symptoms of you're having a heart attack. So I go downstairs, talk to my wife, Sydney, take two aspirin, say, I'm gonna lay here five minutes, and if things don't get better, call 911. Five minutes later, we called 911. And boy, and they were there in just a few minutes, had, uh, you know, checked me out, hooked me up. They knew I was having some kind of heart distress, had me on the gurney, out in the ambulance, on our way to Meridian Park, sirens blaring. I'm telling you, that is a humbling experience. Anybody been strapped down in a gurney with the sirens going? I tell you, it's a humbling experience. So I'm laying there, and you know, we're bumbling along, and they're, and they're saying, stay with us, Doug, stay with us. I'm, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and they were, they were radioing ahead. Uh, yeah, we have a 57-year-old male with uh, heart, uh, you know, heart rate, cardiac arrest. You know, could you guys talk about that and the other, like, go in front and say that kind of stuff? And it's, uh, you know, it, it, it's humbling. You know, wh what do you think about it in a moment like that? Because... Definitely it was serious, but you know, I, I, I didn't feel like I was dying. But since I've never gone through dying before, maybe that's how you feel before you die. You don't feel like you're supposed to be dying. I didn't know. So I prayed a prayer. I don't remember the exact words, but that, the prayer in the ambulance went something like this. Lord, thank you. If this is my last day, if this is my last breath, if this is my last heartbeat, thank you. Thank you for the joy of family. Thank you for the people I could love, people who have loved me. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you've allowed me to live all of the years that I've lived. You've blessed me. Thank you, Lord, that you've given me gifts that I could use in serving you in church and make a difference. Thank you for all of that. Now, if there could be some more days, that would be great. <laughs> but if not, if this truly, Lord, is it, I'm ready. I know what you've promised. I live in that promise. I count on that promise. So thank you that I can look forward to life forever in your heavenly home. Um, and I tell you that story uh, because that's the peace I had in that moment of facing death. Hey, so we got to the hospital and, and uh, got me all hooked up and the, I had a small blockage in one little uh, small artery in, in the side of my heart that they could identify and they went and sucked it out, put a stint in and everything's been fine ever since then. And uh, I inherited my dad's coronary heart disease even though at the time I only had a cholesterol of like 160 and blood pressure fine, but I've got that tendency to want to clog up. So yeah, that's, that's what I've got to watch now. And I tell you that story because I God's desire for each and every one of us is this. There will be for you sometime, someday, somewhere, somehow, a last breath, a last heartbeat, a last moment, right? In that moment, the Lord wants you to have total confidence and peace about what happens next. The Lord wants you to have a joy about the life you've lived, but be anticipating the joy of life forever in his kingdom with those who are faithful, who have gone on before you. That is what 
this day is about. Having a joy that makes all of the difference. Because your death is certain, but it's not final because Jesus rose from the dead and won a victory over death, a victory that he shares with anyone who believes in him or trusts in him as Lord and Savior. And so our hope, if you had to summarize all of this today, is, is, uh, is this great truth that because of God's big butt of Easter, we have a hope that changes how we live our lives. An internal peace now and e an eternal promise of life forever in his kingdom. So I want to wrap up by sharing just a few things that our kids have said about Easter. They've got an amazing perspective about life and Easter. Well, we asked them to fill out a little form and put on there, why are you happy at Easter? And a lot of them said because of the candy and the eggs and the toys and the gifts and all of that. But there were a few that just stood out, and these are just precious. They said, why are you happy at Easter? Because it makes us all feel like we weren't meant, that we were meant to be here and just not a mistake. God did all of that for you because you are not a mistake. You are loved by the Lord so much. He died for you and he rose for you. Why are you happy at Easter? Because Jesus can save more lives and help more people in need of help. And I love that little picture of Jesus coming out of the tomb like Rocky, like, yeah! <laughs> I don't know what happened, but uh, that's all. I hope it looked like that. That would have been cool. All right, we're just going to skip these, and here, we'll go to this last one. Uh, this little, this uh, kid wrote, I used to be happy on Easter because I believed in the Easter Bunny, and because of all of the candy and stuff I got. But, there's that word, but now I'm happy because I believe in Jesus. And I will go to heaven forever and see my grandma again. <laughs> that is why we celebrate today. And that is the hope that the Lord wants you to have. Because God's big butt of Easter makes and internal and eternal difference in our lives now and forever. So Luke, when he writes his gospel, was writing to the Roman world. He's writing to a pagan world. He's writing to an unbelieving world to tell them about who Jesus was and what Jesus did. And so he crafted everything so that so these unbelieving people could learn about Jesus. If Luke was alive today, if Luke was writing about the Easter story today, what would it sound like? How would he do it? Do you think he'd be on Twitter? Do you think he'd be on YouTube? Let's see. Hashtag, I like big butts. <laughs> Man, that is a big butt. Wow, that is a big butt. Matthew 19, 26 says that with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. You may think your marriage has no hope, but with God, there is hope. You may think your career or your kids have no future, but God says he has your future in his hands. You may say your life has no purpose, but with God, you do have a purpose. God likes big butts and he cannot lie. Before you judge, just let me take a while. See, we get overwhelmed with the problems in life, but we know we done turned away from Christ. But that's what he said. Just smile and nod your head. Let me see your hands if you're born again. It's dumb, it's cheesy, but you're not going to forget that, are you? <laughs> Another church came up with this, and if you want to know, several people have asked me, where would you find that? So I'll tell you the church and the website that did that if you want to share it with somebody. Well, let's uh, join our hearts in prayer. Again, Lord, thank you for the gift of life that you bring at Easter. Lord, you came so that we could have life, and we are here to say thank you. And I pray, Lord, that if there is even just one person here unsure of all of this or they, they haven't ever made that step of faith and made this real, Lord, that now in this moment of prayer they would understand your love for them and your desire to have all of these gifts, that they would say yes to you and by faith say, yes, Lord, I believe in you as my Lord and Savior. 
sins forgiven, the, the promise of life forever. Lord, and let us who believe take this message out, not keep it to ourselves, and share it with all who need to hear in Jesus' name. Amen.